All right, so in this video, we'll be wrapping up unit one, and we're going to just close out by talking about nucleic acids by themselves. Nucleic acids have a lot going on, and so they need kind of their own little section to them. We're actually not going to be talking about a whole lot more than what we've talked about already in here, but I mainly want to go over the differences and similarities between RNA and DNA. And so first we'll look at the similarities between RNA and DNA. Again, both of these are nucleic acids. So by definition, they're composed of individual subunits called nucleotides. And each one of those nucleotides is made of a five carbon sugar, a nitrogenous base, and a phosphate group. And you can see that very clearly here. Remember, nitrogenous bases need nitrogen just by their name. And phosphates obviously need phosphorus. And so this DNA molecule needs a, not only carbon, but phosphorus and nitrogen in order to be made. Nucleotides are connected via covalent bonds, and they form what is known as this sugar phosphate backbone. You'll often hear it called that. Here's the phosphate. Here's the sugar. Here's the phosphate. Here's the sugar. And they form this nice backbone, which is a very rigid structure. And the nitrogenous base is perpendicular then to this backbone. Almost think of it like the rails of the ladder, the sides of a ladder are this sugar phosphate backbone. And then the rungs of the ladder are the nitrogenous bases sticking out to connect to the nitrogenous bases of the other side. In the case of DNA, in the case of RNA, of course, RNA is single stranded. And then each one of these linear strands has directionality to it, remember, whereas this carbon here is the five prime carbon to this three prime carbon here. And so DNA runs in this five prime to three prime direction. And so this, this type of arrangement is going to be found whether we're talking about DNA or RNA. It's going to look very similar to this. Differences are um, we need to count those in because even here you couldn't tell maybe uh, which one of this is. Is this a DNA or an RNA? Well, we don't know. Well, this sugar is a big indicator of the difference. And so the RNA bases are going to have ribose as their sugar and the DNA bases are going to have deoxyribose as their sugar. And if you look at them closely, you can kind of figure out why that is. Everything is very similar. You have your one, two, three, four, five prime sugars or carbons. And then you have your hydroxyl group here and just an H here. Whereas on ribose, you have a second hydroxyl here, this OH. And so it's minus an oxygen deoxy ribose. So hopefully that helps you to understand. Of course, we know that these sugars are going to be different because they have different components. Therefore, if their uh, composition is different, their structure is going to be different, and then their function is going to be different. And so these two molecules do have different functions. Another difference between DNA and RNA is going to be the nitrogenous bases that are found. Notice the similarities first. Adenine is found in both guanine is found in both and as is cytosine but thymine here is only found in dna and uracil is only found in rna and so anywhere you would have a thymine you're going to have a uracil in rna instead all these other three are the same except for rna is always going to have this uracil dna is going to have the thymine. And so A matches with T, C matches with G, whereas in RNA, that U is going to match with the A. And then lastly, DNA is always going to be double-stranded. You're going to see it double-stranded, whereas RNA is typically single-stranded. RNA is a lot less... Um, structurally sound than DNA. DNA is a lot more uh, put together and a lot more stable because of the hydrogen bonds that connect here in the center, whereas RNA doesn't have that. RNA is more of a temporary uh, molecule as it's used as a kind of a go-between molecule in a lot of different cellular functions like 
the, well, for instance, the making of proteins. However, RNA can kind of combine on itself if you get that. So the C's and G's still really like one another. And so, you know, you have the C's and the G's or the blues and the greens. You see them connected in DNA here. Well, this blue here still likes this green here. And this, this RNA can kind of fold up on itself. As you see here, over here, this is a, what's known as a ribozyme, which is just an RNA enzyme. And so RNA can form a shape by folding up on itself, and it can form an enzymatic function where it goes and helps with the reaction. And you see this in several different cellular processes that we will talk about over the course of this year. But the big, the big takeaway here as far as their uh, differences is RNA is typically found single-stranded in the cell and DNA is typically found double-stranded.